Welcome to Not Your Mother's Goons, Episode 1, The Gingerbread Man. July 22nd, 2017 seemed to be your average Saturday in rural Vermont. The sun was out, and 68-year-old Lois McBride had the windows open as she set about to do some baking. Little did she know that she was about to set in motion a string of events leading to one of the most gruesome snack food massacres of all time. Lois and her husband Norman were longtime goat farmers, but on this day, they were goat farmers with a hankering for dessert. Lois cut out a gingerbread man named Dwight, heated up to 350, and returned 12 minutes later ready to eat. She couldn't have anticipated what would happen when she opened the oven door. Lois McBride. I've never seen anything like it. I opened the door, and that dang thing was alive! She didn't take her meds! I heard that! Anyway, like I said, I opened up the oven, and that gingerbread man took off on the run, blathering on about how we couldn't catch him. The gingerbread man was right about one thing. The senior citizen bakers were not about to run him down. But they were not the only ones thinking about eating him that day. As he took off down the dirt road through farm country, the livestock encounters began. Up first, a cow. Holstein Elsie Mooten. Moo! Was I really going to eat him? Moo bet I was. You ever eat grass and hay all day? But, as you can see, I'm not exactly Seabiscuit over here. He was gone before I could take a bite. Moo! The gingerbread man continued to sprint, soon encountering Seabiscuit, but leaving him in the dust as well. And if the animal run-ins weren't random enough yet in this story, no one could have anticipated what happened next. Chicken Clucks McRoaster. Well, uh, we tried. But you get the idea, the chicken didn't eat our man either. But his day was just beginning. When we come back, the road takes a deadly turn. Welcome back to Not Your Mother's Goons, where we left Dwight the Gingerbread Man outrunning a cow, a horse, a chicken, and two bingo players on his flight to freedom. Everything was going swimmingly, but little did he know that a lack of swimming ability would soon lead to his demise. Exactly what happened next remains a mystery. Sheriff Randy Wintrix, who may be related to Sheriff Tupper from Murder, She Wrote. About a quarter after three that afternoon, we receive a missing persons call about a Mr. Ginger. Our team tracked this ginger via traffic camera to the intersection of Farm Lane Road and the Chompamup River. He appears to have met up with another animal, either a fox, maybe a beaver. Hard to say. A lot of water critters down the Chompamup. River otters, beavers, spiders. Officer Cooper here thinks she saw a tiger shark. Anywho, this ginger man and the fox have a conversation. We got the tape. Officer Cooper, roll the footage. Go back. No, too far. Forward. There. Right there. He puts his paw on his stomach and he wags a finger like he's saying, don't worry, not hungry. Then the two disappear off camera. Quarter hour later, the fox returns alone, sporting a large grin and wearing a lobster bib and a pair of khakis. He gets his car keys from his car keys and takes off. Obviously, we have no idea what transpired. A wicked mind bender. The case has gone on unsolved for years, languishing in obscurity until not your mother's goons investigate it. Through our research, we've discovered previously overlooked police audio of a dripping wet fox named Todd being interviewed by a deputy on a coincidental traffic stop just minutes after the incident. Todd the Fox. Officer, hey. No, 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 haven't been drinking anything. Definitely not. Just back from the pool. They were, um, they were out of towels. What is the truth about what happened to the gingerbread man? Did he safely cross and disappear into witness protection? Did he swim himself and meet a soggy demise like a dunked Oreo? Theories abound, but proof is lacking. Todd the Fox declined to comment, and his lawyer, a bloodhound named Copper, chased us off his property. A human neighbor, Amos Slade, did say he'd tell us whatever we wanted if it meant he'd be allowed to shoot the fox afterward. Thus ends episode one of Not Your Mother's Goons, unfortunately with more questions than answers. 
Join us next time as we investigate a curious woodland burglary with everything. Broken chairs, spilled porridge, and a suspect found sleeping in bed confound a group of bears who just wanted to go for a walk. You decipher the clues, since obviously we sure as hell can't, on the next Not Your Mother's Goons. <laughs>